My people are destroyed from a lack of knowledge. That's Hosea 4 and 6. Today, I'm going to discuss what everybody needs to know. Hello, you are listening to the Manifest on Purpose show. I am your host, Kimberly. I am here to help you elevate your mind. Thank you so much for sharing your time and energy with me today. Thank you for sharing this with the ones you love. And thank you for subscribing here and on the website at Kimberly, K-I-M-B-A-L-E-Y.com. And as always, the God in me loves the God in you. Let's start our show today with the numerology forecast for today, courtesy of astro-numerologist Lloyd Strayhorn and the Astar 8 numerology app. It is Monday, November the 19th. The sun is in Scorpio. The moon is in Pisces. It's a nine universal month, a three universal week. An 11 Universal Day. Today is about making needed changes around the home, the workplace, and to a degree in your personal and business relationships as well. However, don't be in such a rush that you fail to take others and their feelings into consideration, but rather create a peaceful and harmonious situation where possible. It's what you call a win win. Leo, Aquarius, Cancer, and those born on the 2nd, 7th, 11th, 16th, 20th, 25th, and 29th of any month are the ones that are likely to smooth things over than anyone else. Once again, this is Lloyd's Daily Forecast, courtesy of astro numerologist Lloyd Strayhorn. You can get your daily forecast every single day. Download the app. A star, A S T A R, the number eight dot com, or you can also get it on Apple and Google as well. I was gifted a book recently entitled Six Minute X Ray by Chase Hughes. The book is about rapid behavior profiling. Before I began to read the book, I felt like I had pretty good judge of character and that I was great at discerning people. The book taught me that there is so much more to learn. The author blew me away with one particular statement. He said that we hold on to programs that are linked to our ancestors. That's pretty deep and a very bold statement. In fact, the moment I read that, it made me think about one of Carl Jung's concept of the collective unconscious. He indicated that we receive information from those that are no longer here, specifically the ancestors. It is my belief that these two men from totally different times are really relaying the same message. My way of simplifying this message is that you were passed down information from your ancestors, and this includes programmed information. I went deep into thought about something recently. What triggered those thoughts was a sensitive moment that I had. During an experience, I felt the need to cry. But nope, I refused. Not this, Leo. I have a tendency of holding back the tears when things get rough. I feel like I have to stay strong for everybody else. And I kind of pass those same traits down to my boys. So during this recent experience that was sensitive to me, I asked myself a question. Why not cry? What I really wanted to know is, 
Why do you feel that there is something wrong with crying? And it took me thinking back to my past. And it reminded me of how things were in my childhood. My mom was a disciplinary. She was pretty strict. And she did not like it when I cried. She didn't like the sensitivity when she was trying to tell me what to do. And she talked me out of crying every single time. Bingo. That's exactly why I fight the tears today. Just thinking of how my mother passed that down to me and I passed that down to my children and it's no telling who passed that down to her. It made me feel like there is some truth in us getting information, especially program information through our ancestors. Hosea 4.6 says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. We can interpret knowledge in several different ways. For the sake of this conversation, I'm going to speak on the highest level of knowledge. That's the knowledge of self. Let's reread the scripture again and add that minor detail in it. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge of self. How can you live for self if you don't know that self? It's important because nobody can know you like you do. That's really sad because what I've noticed about others is that a lot of people don't know their selves. Now that you know the problem, here's the solution. Introspection. Notice the prefix of this word, intro. An intro is an introduction to something. It's about getting to know you. Don't be fooled. Instead of this being a one-time event, it is a lifetime event. For as long as you're here walking around on this earth, you should be continuing to get to know yourself. You're constantly changing and evolving. You're not who you were 10 years ago, and you're not who you were yesterday even. Introspection means to look within. Another way to say it is self-observation. Self-observation leads to self-awareness. This is what it means to know thyself. It means tapping into the side of you that no one else knows. Get into the deepest part of yourself. I love to ask questions. Some of the most important questions that I ask is to myself. How else are you going to have a clear understanding without asking questions? When I wanted to get down to the bottom of why I refused to allow myself to cry, I had to go in and ask questions. Going in and asking questions, just stir up your subconscious mind so that you can find answers. Sometimes a program can be so ingrained in you that you don't even recognize it. There may even be blockages in your life right now that you cannot explain. While all along, these blockages come from programs that may have started many, many years ago, even back to ancestry. To get down to the bottom of any challenges you may have, you have to ask yourself questions. To make sure that you are asking the questions that you really need to ask, I'm going to show you today how you can use the five W's to ask yourself questions. And I'm even going to throw in an H this time. I'm going to call this the five W's of introspection. First W is what? What's the challenge? This question requires you to be real with yourself because to be honest with you, many people get stuck at this stage because they're in a state of denial. Let's talk about the disease and the symptoms. 
because a lot of people get confused with the symptoms. The symptoms are only a result of the disease. Let me break it down to you like this. Your symptoms are the imbalances in your everyday life. These imbalances come as a result of what is really going on with you. The root of the problem. Being stressed out every day is just a symptom. But there is always an underlying condition that creates those symptoms. And most of the time, yes, it is a faulty, outdated program. Something that someone told you many years ago that really didn't apply to you or doesn't apply to your life right now. You can use my next favorite W to get down to the root of what is really going on with you. That is why. Why is one of the most powerful questions you can ask yourself. This is a technique that I share with my clients. And most of the time when I use this technique, at some point, tears start flowing. I'm going to use my experience to demonstrate what the why technique does. Okay, here's the what. I wouldn't allow myself to cry. First question is, why won't I allow myself to cry? The answer may be, because I feel like crying is a sign of weakness. Why do you feel like crying is a sign of weakness? I feel like crying is a sign of weakness because I was taught that you seem weak when you cry. So that's how the why questions go. And you will continue that until you get down to the very root of what is going on with you. More than anything else, the why questions really make you think. It brings things to the surface that you didn't even know was there. You can then go on to ask yourself, When did this event occur to further pinpoint when the programming started? What was happening during that time? Allow yourself to see how outdated these programs are. For me, I was able to identify that this is something that happened in my childhood. And I was also able to identify another W. That's the win. And now that you have identified the faulty program that has given you a false identity of yourself, you need to ask yourself, who do you wish to become? The next question on the list is where? Where do I go from here? You know where you started at. You know where you are right now. The question now is, What's the new direction that I will travel in my life? I promise to give you a bonus letter. That bonus letter is H for how. Now that you know what direction you want to go in, how are you going to do it? And this is important. This is when you start building your life one step at a time. Building new programs one step at a time. My people are destroyed from a lack of self-knowledge. You know, there's a lot of controversy going around about the modern day AI, bots, and other technology. But the truth of the matter is, there's always been robots in our midst. Robots are a result of programming. And there's so many people walking around in today's society programmed from as far back as our ancestors and don't even recognize. I know it sounds far-fetched, but from my recent discovery, I was programmed that big girls don't cry. Little did I know that that program would go on to affect me in adulthood. What about you? Are there any symptoms in your life that has resulted from a deeply rooted program? There's only one way to find out. 
introspection. Go on within yourself. Self-observation. Self-observation leads to self-awareness. Introspection should be constant in your life. It should be a ritual because you're always changing. You're always evolving. You're not the same person that you used to be. It's necessary that you ask yourself questions so that you can determine who you really are at this very moment. There's one thing that everybody needs to know. Know thyself. I love you to life. This is how you manifest on purpose. Huh?